What's up guys? So it is 11.19 p.m. on New Year's Eve and I'm here making this video. Now some of you would just say that's because, well, Jameson, you have no friends. To which I would reply, that's just rude. Why would you, why would you say that? Ah, my camera's doing that weird thing where the autofocus just jitters a little bit. I don't have time to fix this right now if I want to get this video for tomorrow, so we'll just have to deal with it. The truth is I'm here because I'm pissed off. Now, I don't use that word lightly because my mom watches these videos and she doesn't like that word, but I tried saying ticked off and it just didn't convey what I was trying to say. So we're gonna stick with it. But the truth is I'm pissed off about something that's been going on in my life. So I'm making this rant video to you guys about myself, but there very well may be others of you that feel the same way and hopefully it's beneficial to you. So what is this rant about? So you'll see this New Year's Day, I'm filming it New Year's Eve. Um, uh, if you're watching this, have you set New Year's resolutions? Good, if you have, I'm about to tell you why they're going to fail. So according to one study that was found of people who set re resolutions and followed them to see if they succeeded, only 8% of people who set New Year's resolutions said they actually achieved them. 8% is a terrible success rate, but 8%, 8? Percent. But let me tell you why setting goals based on New Year's is just a dumb idea. So first of all, let's acknowledge it makes sense why it's appealing to set a New Year's resolution. It's it's very neatly packaged to be able to set a goal at the beginning of a year and track your progress over the course of that year. But it just puts way too much emphasis on the fact that you're starting on January 1st instead of a more significant time to you. One of the biggest issues is most goals don't fit into 12 months. Some should be a lot faster, taking weeks or months. Some take a lot longer. And yet we decide 12 months is just the kind of catch-all time period for us to set all of our goals. In my opinion, the biggest problem with New Year's resolutions is it exposes the bigger issue of our mindset being so focused on a year uh, and expecting our progress to be noticeable in a year. Uh, what am I going to accomplish this year? What did I do last year? When we should be more concerned with a much smaller increment of time. Because in case you didn't go to public school, my friends, a year is made up of 365 days. And if you want your life to fly past you, the best way to do that is to ignore the significance of individual days and focus more on bigger chunks of time, months, years, decades. See, that's what this rant is about. You may think that I'm ramping up to like, goals are important because it's how you make more money, it's how you get recognized, it's how you become an expert, but that's not what this is about for me. Those things are common side effects of what this is about for me, but what this means for me and why I think it's so important as I've dwelt on it for so long, because what it is about for me is about my ability to go to bed every night and just think to myself, wow, I liked what happened today. I liked what I did. I liked the conversations I had, the people I spent time with. I liked the things I learned, the failures I had. I wanna do it again tomorrow. That's what it's about. It's about maximizing each day and getting that feeling of contentment from knowing I took a step forward. It's about living a life that's so fulfilling and time consuming from your perspective that you don't have time to know every single detail about your friends that they're posting on social media. It's about not knowing every TV show that everyone's raving about because you're just too busy doing your own stuff that makes you feel good. So to come back to this, like New Year's Eve goals are just a bad idea because it's New Year's Eve. It's not a bad idea to set goals if you're ready to commit to them and it happens to be New Year's Eve because commitment will beat out motivation every single day. The thing that's been preying on my mind a lot more recently is the idea of limiting beliefs. So a limiting belief is exactly what it sounds like. It's a belief that is limiting your ability to hope for a different result. So some pretty common limiting beliefs are, I don't have time, uh, I don't have the energy, I'm not smart enough, or um, one of my favorites, just the, I wouldn't know where to start. Now, limiting beliefs come from many different sources. 
One of them could be personal experience. You've tried in the past and haven't succeeded, so you've just kind of convinced yourself you can't do it. People telling you you can or can't, straight up to teachers educating you that you can or can't. Um, and even just society and like science as a whole. A quick story about that. I don't know if you've heard about like when Roger Bannister broke the four minute mile. Before he did it, science said it was literally impossible for a human to break a four minute mile. Like they said that your heart would explode from running at that pace. So that was a limiting belief that was imposed by scientific experts. But Roger Bannister was like, nah, I'm gonna do it anyway. So limiting beliefs come from so many places. That could even be just fear. A limiting belief could be because you just think, I don't really want to do this, so I'm going to like tell myself I can't. So I'm hearing fireworks going off in the background. Uh, it means it's midnight, so happy new year to you guys. May this year be prosperous to you and your loved ones. Now back to me dissing new year's resolutions. Okay, let's just make a quick example that shows why limiting beliefs are so important to eradicate. Um, let's say your goal is to read more. So let's say there are two people or just two versions of yourself that want to read more. And one of them says, well, I don't, I really don't have time, but I'll try. It sounds noble, but you've already imposed an excuse that justifies your failure. You've already said, well, I don't have time. So that when you one day slip up and don't make the time, you can easily say, yeah, well, I just didn't have the time. And then there's the other version of you that just says, I will make time to read more. And that's it. It doesn't matter what you think you have or don't have time for. If it's important to you, you're going to make the time and that's that. Limiting beliefs are those things that itch in the back of your brain that kind of, it's like, it's like a crash pad for when you assume you're going to fail. It's, it's something to try and like soften the blow if you don't reach your expectations because you can just fall back and be like, yeah, well, I mean, I knew I didn't have the energy to keep up with that, but I just thought I'd give it a go. That is a really sad thing. That is a really tragic thing that affects so many people. And it's crippled me for a long time. Um, it's made me very pessimistic and cynical um, compared to the, the kid I was a few years ago, bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. And um, it's gonna take some time to repair and just uh, focusing on being grateful for what I have and the opportunities that I have before me and focusing on making the most of what I can. And I believe that slowly it'll change and it's not gonna be because I made some dumb goal on the first of 365 days in one single year. So my rant's gone on for longer than I expected. I'm not discouraging you from goals. I'm encouraging you to make goals. Just do it the right way. Like if you wanna lose the weight, lose the weight. If you want to get a new job, do what it takes to get the better job. If you want to become a stand-up comic, have at it. Just go about it the intelligent way. So as I wrap up this video, I have three takeaways that I hope you've been able to extract from it. First of all, it's about changing your mindset to where you care about individual days instead of letting them slip past you like grains of sand down the, what do you call that thing? Oh my gosh. Hourglass, Hour, it's the hourglass. It's like grains of sand slipping down the hourglass. Two, accept that failure is still progress. If you tried and failed miserably, it's still better than sitting on a couch and trying nothing because you're afraid of failing. It means you're better educated for your next attempt. It means that you're a little bit more hardened against future failures. Failure is good stuff. Don't shy away from it. And three, don't do it because it's January 1st. Do it because it's the right time, because you're ready to commit to bettering yourself. That's all I ask. As always, guys, thanks for tuning in. Appreciate it when you watch my videos, take the time out of your day. Uh, when I started this morning, I had no idea this is what I'd be doing with my New Year's Eve, but uh, it hit me pretty hard. Really wanted to make it in time to be out on New Year's Day. It's just been something that's been on my mind a lot, and I've really thought through it and kind of come to these conclusions that I wanted to share with you. Uh, finally, I want to apologize if I've been really antsy during this video. I have never made one where I'm standing up before, and I wanted to try it because it's like more movement, but I feel like I might have moved too much. Anyway, catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching, and as always, stay blessed.